you're wondering right here looks like we got a kitten in here starting to follow me up here to the shop more 
what we're looking at this is the top of the post and this is a tenon that will go inside of a mortise on a top plate whenever we get those things sawed up and put up in the air and there's a ton of different ways you can do this but i found the fastest way that i can do this is to take my steel saw i come in here and cut my shoulder and then i take off the cheats of this tenon with the chisel and uh, that's pretty fast so i'm not videoing this stuff it goes a whole lot faster and there's a ton of different ways you can do this. I know guys that use routers. You can use a chain mortiser and come down and work back to the line. And uh, some guys come in here and make about 30 cuts and with kerf cuts. I've done that as well. And then they bust out the waist. But I figured out the fastest way to do this is just make one cut on the shoulder and come in here with the chisel. And this is a number, uh, this is a one inch Robert Sorby chisel, one of my favorite chisels. And then grab your mallet and start working through the waist. And I've got a few high spots right here. I'll probably go ahead and work down with the chisel. And then I'll grab that two inch Japanese slick and work down to the line. And this one will be done right here. That slick makes very fast work of these tenons. Little high spot right there. Some of them you can't really push out. You're better off just using the mallet on. There we go. And this is fun work, guys. There's, like I said, there's faster ways to do this, but I enjoy it, and this is about the best way that I've found for me to do it the most accurate. If you're curious about this tool, this is a two inch Japanese chisel. I use it just like a slick, and man, it works really nice. It has a red oak handle on it right there and a ferrule on the end. Got this from Shelter Institute up in Maine. I'll leave a link down below to their online store. A great resource for timber framing tools. And also they have an online school that you can take part in as well. But I actually uh, I signed up for that earlier this year and watched all the videos. It was extremely helpful. But this thing right here is just so accurate. And it doesn't take much force at all just to peel that wood right back. sawdust there but the only thing i found that you really got to be careful on is getting carried away because this is just a fun process when you have a nice sharp tool like this peeling this stuff back those white pine it works up really nice with hand tools extremely nice and uh you just got to be careful that you stop because i tell you you get carried away on this stuff and i have one other post and I just keep on going because it's, you know, it's kind of fun. But there, right there, you don't need a mallet. Just a little bit of hand pressure. And sometimes I throw my hip into it just a little. And that's all it takes. Those shavings. Really nice right there. And that leaves a really nice finish on the cheats of this tenon right here. doing here guys I'm paying for cutting the corner on the front end guys and what I mean by that is this white pine was sawed with a dull blade and now I'm having to clean it up and make it look presentable with my jack plane let me grab the GoPro and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about all right now guys I was just explaining this on Instagram so if you follow me on Instagram you've already seen this right here you can see the side facing us, and that is not sawdust on there. That's tear out due to a dull blade 
and saw your error. I know better than that, guys, but I was pushing that blade and trying to get as much as I could out of it, but now I'm paying for it. And I could leave it like that, but it looks pretty bad, and it doesn't take long with the jack plane to clean it up. So you can see the difference right there. We have that terrible surface right there left by the dual blade. And on top, the jack plane cleans it right up. Looks really nice right there. So it's an extra step. If you keep a sharp blade on there, you don't have to do this, but you can correct it very easily. So one more time, terrible face right there. Strings hanging off, just looks awful right there. And this one over here is just the same. I've got to do the same thing on it and the one right there under that sawdust. All three of them are just like this. But with the jack plane or number seven or whatever you got on hand, you can actually clean it up pretty nice and it doesn't take too long as long as you have a nice sharp iron. And also be careful not to go over your layout lines. Mm -hmm.